The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, this is Mary Catherine Campbell with Plug in America. Welcome to our webinar this evening, uh, Building an Electric Future Today. Um, first, we'll talk a little bit about some housekeeping issues, and then we'll kick off the webinar with uh, a nice agenda by some of my colleagues. Um, the webinar is uh, presented tonight by the partners who put on National Drive Electric Week, Plug in America, the Electric Auto Association, and the Sierra Club. Um, everyone on the phone will be on mute. Uh, so if you have any questions, please use the chat panel on the right. There's a little question panel that you can click and you can uh, raise your hand and ask questions. We'll save your questions for the end of the presentation. If you have any problems, so please do let us know um, in that chat panel as well, technical difficulties or others. Um, so Mary is going to kick off with our webinar agenda. Mary, if you'd like to take it away. Sure, thanks MK. We are gonna start off with giving an overview of National Drive Electric Week this year and some of the goals that we have set for ourselves to reach. We have helpful documents and templates and some tips that we wanna share with you to keep in mind as you continue to organize leading up to National Drive Electric Week. We also have organized a petition to distribute at your events for attendees to sign and we'll take a few moments to talk about that. We have created a toolkit of best practices or a model EV legislation that you can um, use also, and we will mention what that entails. And we have a guest speaker, Dick Murray. He is an elected official and longtime NDU City captain. And okay, so I will um, so take in a few moments to talk about some of our. Oh, sorry. Go oh, sorry, Mary. I apologize for that. I kind of skipped ahead. I wanted to tell everybody about who's on the call today. That's good. Yeah, no problem. Okay. So there's me. I'm Mary Catherine Campbell, uh, Plug in America's National Drive Electric Week Program Manager. I'm joined by my colleague, Catherine Stankin, who is a Policy Director for Plug in America. You already heard very briefly there from my friend and colleague, Mary Lunetta. She is a campaign representative for the electric vehicle initiative at Sierra Club and also our um, we'll hear, hear a little bit later on in the presentation from our esteemed guest uh, Dick Murray of uh, Washington State who is a longtime city captain and uh, electric vehicle champion okay Mary okay great <laughs> thanks MK <clears throat> so uh, this is the seventh year of National Drive Electric Week, and every year since we have begun, NDU gets bigger and better than the year before. We consistently see a yearly uptick in the number of events, the number of participating cities, and the amount of media hits that we get. So this year, we've set some goals to ensure that 2017 is the best NDU yet. We're shooting for 250 events in at least 230 cities in all 50 states and we really want NDU to be well represented in the media as we usually are uh, this year we're aiming for NDU to be mentioned in at least 550 media hits uh, last year we had uh, just under 450 media hits which was really really good it was a huge jump from the year before that 2015 where we had uh, 231 media hits still impressive but as you can see we always do leaps and bounds better than the year before. So we're really excited to see how 2017 pans out. You can go to the next slide, MK. As of today, we have 197 events, which is amazing. We've been working really hard to hit the goals that I just mentioned on the previous slide. And so far, we are collectively doing really, really great. Uh, 197 events in 45 states. That is 52 events ahead of where we were at this time last year, which is really amazing. And we owe this to all of our dedicated city captains and many volunteers. So thanks for all the good work that you guys are doing out there. You can go to the next slide. Okay, I'll take over for this slide. Um, so many of you are new to this 
uh, event. So we wanted to just run down some of the most successful uh, event uh, tips and tricks that that help introduce the public to the joy of driving electric. Some of the most successful events feature an opportunity for people to get behind the wheel. Um, uh, exhibitors are able to show off related uh, products and services. Um, there are some interesting and neat and fun conversion car displays that kind of uh, pique people's interest and then uh, woo them into uh, asking questions about cars they can actually purchase, which is great. Uh, lots of city captains this year will be showing and, and often show a movie called Who Killed the Electric Car? And there are some other film viewings that will be going on. Um, an inconvenient sequel, I think, will be uh, certainly be available in many of the locations by the time the events kick off. Another really cool thing that people do, and it's highly visible and attractive to media and many um, elected officials, is an EV parade. Uh, some of the city captains go so far as to decorate the cars to draw extra special attention to their uh, events. Um, we don't typically actually recommend drag races because it's a liability issue, but I am happy to say that there are some EVs that would beat even the, the fanciest race cars off the, off the track if they were pitted against each other. I would probably say we would probably say don't do drag races at your end event, but um, ribbon cutting ceremonies, that's another great opportunity for you to highlight, highlight and showcase what your uh, elected and local officials have been doing in your communities, for example. Um, a, a ribbon cutting ceremony for a charging station at a local mall or a church or a, a library would be really alluring to the um, to the media to come cover and it would help uh, kind of show off what uh, your local officials have been um, working so hard to implement um, in terms of infrastructure. Um, there are a number of electric buses now on the market, which is really exciting for those of us who consider ourselves kind of vehicle dorks. Um, this is a beautiful connection between public transit and vehicle electrification that will help clear the air in many cities. And now there are going to be a number of electric buses at various events throughout the country, um, which is a super exciting development in the heavy duty side. Um, of course, uh, live music is always a draw. I would have put local food trucks or food vendors at the top of the list because when you feed people, they tend to be happy. Um, and that's an alluring thing to get people in. Um, one of the most popular events that we've um, witnessed or been involved in over the past few years has been uh, free tacos for test drives events. Um, and if you can get uh, local vendors to donate, even better. But uh, you can also ask for sponsorships from local uh, 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 service companies or product companies that can help defer those costs. Um, and then there are also some workshops where people are really interested in some of the technical and policy issues that are uh, cropping up around this. And um, there are some uh, city captains who go all out and put together really interesting and compelling panels for people, for the public to learn about um, why electric cars are important and how easy they are to, to, to own and maintain. And then these last three bullets are super colored because we um, want to use this opportunity tonight to talk to you about how we give kind of legs to Endu all year long. We call it Endu National Drive Electric Week. Um, giving Endu legs is really important so we want to just not drop everything at, on September 17th and move on and for planning for next year what we'd like to do is use this as a platform for you to um, present compelling and interesting speakers invite and engage with your elected officials and um, work on proclamations for your city for your village for your county for your state um, and also uh, promote new and interesting smart EV policies and programs that are going on in your neck of the woods. So we want this to be kind of a, a jumping off point for you so that um, you're able to use some of the tools and tricks we'll show you later in this presentation to um, 
promote and accelerate the transition to electric cars all year long. So how can we make and do last all year? Well, um, it starts with you, of course, as many things do. Everything starts with us uh, as individuals and spreads out from there. So we are really encouraging you to reach out and speak to your local elected officials and invite them to attend your event. Um, uh, my colleague Mary pointed out to me, there might be some city captains out there who have not yet noted that their events are um, going to have local elected, elected officials attending. So if you are inviting them and they're confirmed, or even if they're just invited, you can put parenthetically invited mayor, Mr. Mrs. Mayor invited um, and, or confirmed in your event description. That'll also help us track and amplify your work um, and it will be a draw for media and others to attend the event. Um, we'll introduce a little bit later uh, the first NDU petition, National Drive Electric Week petition that will apply hopefully to all of your event um, locations and help build public momentum for uh, for electric cars. Um, and then, of course, this is something that will hopefully lead to bigger and better things. So this is part of your kind of role as an EV champion in your community to build relationships with local elected officials to make a difference um, where it matters to you at your at your home base. And and in that instance, it's something that will evolve over time and you will start to get to know each other and build relationships and come to rely on those officials to um, implement smart policies, uh, which will, of course, then turn into more electric cars on the road, which is what we're all trying to do. Um, and then we have, we will introduce this uh, Achieve Best Practice Policy Toolkit to you later on in this presentation. Um, that will help you continue the conversation and get into more details about uh, what are the smartest policies, what are the best practices that are working in states or in cities or in uh, small towns where uh, infrastructure is being built out or there's a plethora of EVs being rolled out and there's the clustering effect that we like to think about um, when you see two or three EVs in a neighborhood, suddenly people start asking questions and and that kind of blossoms into a, a cluster. So um, this will take you to the next level, we're hoping, um, and help you help us achieve um, policies that will reach all of our goals. So um, I believe that this is Mary's slide. Mary? Thanks, MK. <clears throat> um, so Step one for making Indu last beyond just that one week is invite elected officials. Um, a huge way to um, make elected to make Indu last beyond just one week is really engaging with elected officials and inviting them to attend your event and especially to speak because they want to meet their constituents. They want to talk about the great work they're doing to help accelerate EV adoption, and they want to share what plans are in the works in your community. So don't be fearful or intimidated. Definitely reach out. They get lots of um, similar invitations. Uh, so it, they're very used to the, these types of, of, of inv invitations, um, which is also a very important reason why to start as early as possible because their calendars can fill up. So if you haven't already extended invitations, please consider doing so. Um, and we, ha we have lots of materials to get you started on our NU website under the resources tab. Um, where where elected officials go, the media will be there too. So inviting public officials to your event is a really good way to ensure that your event will get media attention. And it's a really powerful way to build relationships with representatives who are designing and voting for the policies that will ultimately impact our communities and air quality for years and even decades to come. Not everyone has experience inviting elected officials like the mayor or city council members or representatives um, of state agencies, um, especially not to like your grassroots event that you're helping to organize. So we just want to emphasize that it's a lot less difficult and intimidating than you probably think. And again, we have templates and resources for you on the NDU site that make this process really simple and straightforward. 
um, case in point, we have a template invitation on our website. Um, under the resources tab, you'll find uh, a template invitation and it looks just like that on the left um, where you can uh, download it and you can customize it and send it to your local elected officials um, with your specific event information and uh, the description of the event. All that stuff in yellow is where you can um, replace it with information that is specific to your event and help um, really kind of make it sound interesting and you know explain what it is to, to the elected officials. An easy way for an elected official to really support and you at your event is to sign a city proclamation declaring that day or that week to be drive electric day or drive electric week and you have a sample also uh, sample proclamations on the NDU website that you can use this image here is an image of the proclamation that was signed by the mayor of Boise Idaho who attended the NDU event there and um, also he displayed his personal EV at the event and he also spoke to the crowd and the media about the city's electric fleet. Um, so city proclamations are considered kind of like the low hanging fruit when it comes to getting elected officials involved in your event. So it's, it's pretty easy and also fun and, and notable to do. And I'm, with that, I'm done, MK. Okay. okay, great, this is Catherine. Um, welcome and I'm excited to be here and talk about electric vehicles, which I love. Um, so our next step in this, um, tools to help you engage further with your local elected officials and with the crowd and with the media um, is to ask your attendees to sign the NDU petition. So this is the first year ever actually in NDU's history that we have a nationwide petition that we're looking to get um, a lot of support on. And so really, um, we can read the text of the petition right there. Um, and this will be an online petition that will be hosted on the National Drive Electric Week page. So you can drive, um, and we realize that not everyone will have tablets or internet access or Wi-Fi, so it'll be a little tricky to coordinate the getting signatures, but um, there'll be two ways that you can do this. And one will be to drive folks to the Endu website, and there'll be a link off of that page that we'll send around to everybody that will then take you to um, this petition where you fill in your, you know, just your name, your zip code, and just a couple other um, stuff like that. And then this will be sent to your Congress um, representatives and to your senators. Um, so that's one way. And then we'll also provide this text to you um, via a Word document that then you can print off um, if you think you're having, you know, just a couple hundred people attend or many more, you know, you can print off however many copies you might need. Um, and then you can, when you're done with your event, um, scan it in and send it back to us via email or mail it to us or however, and then we'll um, upload all those names and whatnot and make sure that it gets sent out. So because of um, so much media attention that NDU gets during that one week, we really want to make sure that our representatives in Congress are hearing about electric vehicles and about National Drive Electric Week, and this is one of the best ways. Um, and so after all these petitions are sent in during that week of NDU, and actually for that whole month of September, we'll run, this, um, we'll run this campaign and this petition for that whole month. We will then be following up with um, members of Congress and senators and making sure they realize, uh, you know, how important this sector of our economy is um, to make sure that the U.S. stays in the forefront of technology and innovation and to also uh, draw awareness to the fact that there's this $7,500 federal tax credit. Um, and should Congress be moving forward to look at tax reform or a transportation infrastructure package or things like that, we want to make sure that this tax credit is, first of all, preserved. Um, and second of all, perhaps tweaked and um, let the drivers take advantage of this credit for a little more time, um, given that we're still a small percentage of the overall market share right now for, for light duty vehicles. Um, so that's our petition. Um, I think there was another thing I wanted to say about it, but it's completely slipping my mind right now. Oh, um, I remember. So <laughs> Some people are concerned that by maybe drawing attention to the federal tax credit, that could be a bad thing, but really, um, if we're not letting our voices be heard about this really important incentive, then no one else is out there telling your representatives about this, I guarantee you. Um, or the other potential option is that the automakers are out there or the, um, some of the anti-EV groups, and they're saying that this is not an important incentive and no one cares about these vehicles and things like that. So, you know, if we're not being in the forefront and leading this message and showing how important this um, you know, federal policies are and why your federal representatives and senators should care, 
um, you know, then they're hearing a rather anti, anti EV message. So that's why this year, more than ever, um, we thought we should focus a little bit on this nationwide petition and try to get as many supporters as possible, um, you know, sharing the reasons why, why you love to drive electric with your elected representatives. Um, next slide. Mary, I can't remember this is my slide or your slide. Oh, and um, this is yours, Catherine. Okay, um, great. Okay, so building relationships with your local electeds. Um, so it's as both of Mary and, and Kay were saying, um, it's important for you to reach out to your elected official and to say, you know, what your community needs and because um, who better to talk about what you need than you? I mean, you're an EV driver, you're a city captain, um, you're familiar with your community, where the charging stations are, where they need to go, et cetera. And so um, Plug in America on our website, we've got a map of all 50 states that you can hover over each state and you could see what are the kind of policies that your state has. Um, it doesn't get down into the specifics of the community level yet, but if you reach out to any of us, we'd be happy to help you further and um, show you, you know, what policies are particular to your um, certain community. But these are some of the things um, a list of certain policies that if your state or community had that, it would certainly help to drive further adoption of EVs. Next slide. And finally, this is kind of the last tool that we wanted to provide all of you city captains with. And we, we realized that it's a lot already that you are even hosting an event. Um, uh, but like we said, we want to make National Dry Electric Week last beyond just the one week or the one day and last the full year. And so um, we're really looking to you um, for your great EV support and trying to provide you with as much information and templates and resources that we can. So like MK was saying, um, help us help you or whatever that, that saying is there. So this is the next thing in the toolkit that is just about ready to be released. It's just going through a couple formatting tweaks right now. Um, with the design team, and then it'll be uploaded to both the Sierra Club website and the Plug in America website. And what this is, it'll cover a range of best practices for different policies. Um, for example, access to HOV lanes, sales tax exemptions, vehicle fleet mandates, um, what are the best building codes that are out there, multi-unit dwellings, um, what are some of the alternatives to EV registration fees, and then also rebates. And so what this will be is, um, a link to different states that have sort of these best practices. So for example, with HOV lanes, um, what's the policy in New Jersey and where's that specific regulation? What's the policy in Pennsylvania, in Utah, in Colorado, et cetera. And then we'll also provide you with a blank template that essentially you just need to fill in your state. And if your state doesn't have an HOV lane policy, this is something then that you can take to your um, maybe not your elected, your, your local official, but maybe your state representative or your congressional representative um, and, you know, highlight that these are the policies that are needed to put more EVs on the road. Um, so it'll be really easy for you to just download that policy template and then, uh, like I said, fill in your specific state information and then um, present this to your, your local elected official or your state official. So look for that. Um, probably at the end of the week, or if not early next week, and we'll have um, MK send out a blast to everybody on that. Next slide. Okay, great. Well, this is the part that I've been looking very much forward to. So let me just quickly um, introduce Representative Dick Murray to you. Um, he was born in Fairbanks, Alaska, and received his Bachelor of Science in Environmental Health from the University of Massachusetts Amherst in 1975 and his master's in public administration from Golden Gate University in 1988. Commissioned as an officer in the United States Air Force in 1975, he earned his navigator wings in 1976 and flew the C-141 as a navigator. Um, Dick is an Operation Urgent Fury and Gulf War veteran, and he served in the Air Force for 22 years and is a retired Lieutenant Colonel. Um, he was appointed to the Washington House of Representatives in July, 2013 and elected to his first full term in 2014. He is passionate about helping veterans and current members of the military and meeting the educational needs of students, teachers, and parents. He and his wife have been married for 38 years um, and reside in Stylacoom, and they have four children and eight grandchildren. And this is his fourth year as a city captain, so congratulations, Dick, for that. Um, and he drives a Nissan Leaf. So I was hoping that you could um, perhaps 
kick us off here with why you became a city captain in the first place, and then maybe what are some of the reasons that you choose to drive electric? Well, uh, Dick Mary, can you hear me loud and clear? Yep. Can you hear me? Oh, great. Okay, yep, I want to make good. sure of that. The, uh, well, the first I got decided to drive electric back in 2013, and then I heard about this National Drive Electric Week thing, and people telling me about it, and the closest one was in Issaquah, and I said, I don't want to go all the way up to 50 miles of King County. Uh, isn't there one in Pierce County, which has 840,000 people, or Thurston County, which has 250,000? They said no. So I said, hmm, I guess I'll just start my own. And they, they said, go ahead. And so I started really small and had it down at the local beach, 19 cars and about 40 people. And we had a cookout at the end and talked about electric vehicles. And, and that's what I've done for three years in a row, have it down the beach, really kind of small. It grew last year to about 40 vehicles, about 70 people. But this year we decided we're going to go more festive and have it downtown Stilicum next to some uh, eateries and where more people congregate and all that. And some, you know, uh, so that's what we're going to do this year. And, and we're going to grow it. We've already had uh, 42 vehicles sign up and about 104 people. So I expect to hopefully get in the two to 300 attendance rain and uh, maybe about 60 to 70 vehicles. Um, the reason I drive electric is, uh, first of all, I, I thought it's, uh, for me, it's uh, it's all about um, national policy. You know, uh, I'm, I do not like OPEC. I do not like the fact that we have a trade deficit, that we import a lot of oil from nations that don't aren't friendly to us, using our money to uh, oppose us. I have too many of my friends and family who spend time in the uh, in the Mideast. You know, I'm, I, where I live here is uh, right outside the Joint Base Lewis McCord, where we have 50 thousand people uh, either uh, stationed there as military or civilians, uh, 100,000 retirees or veterans that live right in my district here. So it really comes down to it was more of a national policy. Uh, we have great electric rates here in uh, the state of Washington, average rate of eight cents a kilowatt hour here in my, my little town is five and a half cents. So I know people across the nation, I know my brother has a, uh, lives in Hopkinton, Massachusetts and a uh, uh, 17 cents a kilowatt hour, and that's why he's, he's got the solar panels. But uh, it's a great there. It's uh, it's also good for the uh, our state economy. It's good for the ecology. It's good for the air, water. Water pollution is a big thing around here. Uh, for NT, uh, for the Puget Sound runoff from oil leakage and from the gas cars. It's a fun car to drive. Save money. It's just there's no reason not to drive electric and. Uh, and I find that most of my friends who are persuaded to drive electric, and there's been a lot of them, I think I influence a lot of people, all of them are still my friends. In fact, most of them tell me afterwards I've undersold it. You know, they they, they think it's a, just a great way to drive. And uh, and um, it's funny when people come down to my office, especially lobbyists, or uh, the first thing they say, okay, let's talk about electric cars for a minute, and then about the sport of wrestling, which is my other passion, and then we'll get into the other business. And so it's kind of funny, I'm known as the kind of the electric vehicle not of the area, which is okay. If you have to be passionate and crazy about something, that's one thing to do that. Uh, it, uh, it helps being an elected official to running an event like this. You know, it's, uh, you know, I've actually learned a lot just about thinking about this. I need to make sure I get more proclamations, not only from the governor, which we've gotten every year, but from the local mayors and the, uh, the county executive, all who are friends of mine. And, um, uh, some come to the event. Some now are driving electric vehicles themselves, and uh, so I think it's really important to elect right, elect officials because they have friends, and that does draw other people. So uh, I, I think it's a uh, it's you know being well connected uh, to the system helps you run an electric uh, vehicle event. Uh, we do have an interesting at the state level. We have a uh, an informal electric vehicle caucus. Uh, I was vice chair the first year, and that uh, includes the four corners. We have a chair and a vice chair, and uh, and from the what we call the four corners, uh, a Republican and a Democrat senator and a Republican and a Democrat House member. I'm a re Republican in the House, and I am the minority. It's 50 to 48. Uh, the Dem Republicans control the Senate, 25 to 24. So you can see it's a really split down there, but I think we, we try to make the Driving electric and promoting electric vehicles, a bipartisan effort. Uh, it was interesting. Uh, I just saw that thing about the Boise. I have two sons that live in Boise, Idaho, uh, one of whom, as of last week, now drives an electric vehicle. 
And so I think I hopefully I'll have him go meet the mayor and go to the electric vehicle thing and start getting his friends. So we got another advocate in Boise. Whoever is, if anybody on the line from Boise, have them contact me. So, but uh, I love what I do, and I continue to grow this event. And uh, I, I use a lot of Facebook to to grow this event and advertise what we're doing. I send out personal emails and Facebook instant messages to people I want to invite. So you know, uh, text messaging. Uh, just you, you just do it one person at a time. I keep good lists. Anybody who's been to my event, I have usually have their cell phone number and their email address, and I do uh, make sure I personally invite them again. And uh, so that, that's all, another way to to grow your event every year is, is to get new people to come, but also get you can get 70, 80 percent of the people who went the year before to come. That, then they'll do that. Uh, I said like, again, we have a new and improved version this year in Silicon, so I have to make sure that people understand that this is going to be even a lot more fun than we had in having it down the beach, which was very picturesque, but it wasn't the greatest venue to have a ongoing operation. So this time, do you, anything else you think I should add? I have uh, a Tanya here with me. Anything else you think I need to talk about? Um, I like how you give everybody a chance to um, to talk at your event. So elected officials, but just uh, regular EV drivers. Um, I remember you've had all different kinds of guests, including everything from high school students uh, to uh, test blood drivers. So it's I think it's a great chance for everybody to be heard and to be able to share their experiences to get other people involved. Yeah, a big improvement this this year is going to be uh, we got Pierce Transit involved because Pierce Transit, which remember again, I'm, this is a county of 840,000 people, so we're large, uh, centered on Tacoma. Um, Silicon is 6,000 people, so we're a little small historic town here. But Pierce Transit now has their first a uh, bus, a uh, Proterra bus, and they they don't have it delivered yet, but they're, so they're going to go to Seattle and borrow one of theirs, and they're bringing it to the event. But they're actually going to partner with me this year, and not only in the publicity. But the idea of bringing a bus, and I we're doing a site visit next week, and I think uh, I'm going to ask that maybe if we can work our way every 15 minutes to do a two-minute bus ride in the in the bus, so that people can see what an electric bus feels like, smells like, how it drives, and everything. So uh, I think that's going to be a, a great addition to uh, to the show. I do have my seatmate uh, Christine Gimbel. If I'm one of four four districts of the 49 districts where the House members are split by party. My seatmate's a Democrat. I'm a Republican and I've been inviting her every year and she finally is coming because she, she now drives a electric bicycle. So it's close. She's getting there, but uh, so she, she's going to come down with her electric bicycle. We do have some other elected officials, school board members, uh, city council members, uh, mayors, uh, county elected officials. She should invite them all, you know, I mean, be bipartisan and, don't be afraid to invite everybody. Uh, all they can do is say no. And, uh, and I do it mostly by email just because I would save the cost and it's quicker. But, uh, you know, most people, would, you know, email or or sometimes follow it up with a personal phone call. I guess I have never invited my congressman. and I need to do that. Uh, Denny Heck uh, got elected in 2012. He, uh, I got the silver medal, so I came in second. Uh, so <laughs> I, I know Denny real well. We, were, uh, we, we combated each other in the in the marketplace of ideas and an election he won uh, i guess he won because he has to go to dc i get to go to olympia instead a 22 mile commute versus a 3,000 mile commute so i'm not sure if he really won but uh i should have him there that'd be a great to have uh, danny heck there he knows a lot of people and he is going to be hopefully involved in uh, sending a uh, national policy as a congressman back there in uh, uh the other washington so th th Anything else? Any uh, Great. any questions, Dick Mary? Well, I'll wait to the end. Okay. That's, that's yeah. Okay. We can turn to questions now. I think. Okay. I actually do. There's a question specifically. There are a couple questions for you, Dick, if you don't mind. Um, the first sure. one was, "What kind of car do you drive?" Oh, sorry about that. I I started out with a 2013 Nissan Leaf, uh, and then uh, I transferred uh, about a year ago to a 2016 Leaf. Uh, my lease was up, and I was able to get uh, even a better deal, lower price, and, uh, uh, and a 30 kW battery. That that extra six kilowatt hours makes a big difference. And of course, uh, 
I'm looking forward to seeing what this 60 kW car looks like and costs and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, but I drive a Nissan Leaf. Great, great. Um, th this other question I think might be best fielded by you too. It wasn't directed at you, but I'm going to do that anyway. Um, so this is the first NDU um, with a Republic administration in Washington, a Republican administration in Washington. And I think you touched a little bit on how it's not about politics, but it's about policy. But do you have three key benefits of, about EVs that you share with people that kind of transcend political affiliation? Well, I think especially if you're talking to a Republican, you got to really talk about, uh, and this is, you know, again, I'm not a big Trump fan, but I am a Republican, uh, buy American first. Uh, you know, when we buy oil, when we use gasoline, we're basically, because we're net importers of oil, we're buying overseas product, and it's making a huge trade imbalance, and it's affecting our military. So, the fact, one of my favorite sites is Secure America's Future Energy, and um, it's, so you you can talk about this and 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 as a as a good for our economy and as a national policy thing to for us to become more independent, more self-sustaining. So it's good for the environment, but it's also good for America. And so that's that's the approach I use among my more conservative friends, and it wins. It's a winning argument. They say, oh yeah, you're right. Keep my money at home. Keep my money here in the United States. And uh, and and so that's. I know we try to see everybody thinks, you know, save the planet. I talked to my, you know, my, my friends on maybe on the other side of the fence and save the planet doesn't even seem to work for them too much, you know. Plus, I also tell people how you can save your own money. It's the, as my daughter says, uh, it's the Benjamins you get to keep in your pocket. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good for the pocketbook. It's good for the environment. And it's good for our country. Well said. Um, uh, Here's one specifically for you. Would you travel to the San Juan Islands to help promote EVs? Yeah, uh, I I could. Yes, uh, send me send me send me an email note. I I've been about 40 years since I've been to the San Juan Islands, and I only went there by a uh, sailboat, and that was back in 1978. Uh, I'd love to go. Yeah, you bet. Send me a send me an email, Dick at DickMurray.com. So that would be great. Okay, Dick at DickMurray.com, and that's spelled M-U-R-I. Yeah, Muri, um, M-U-R-I. Yep. Muri, as they would say in Italy, right? That's right, that's right. <laughs> Even I can't say <laughs> it. <laughs> um, so this question, I think, maybe might be best fielded by Mary, if you have a moment to unmute yourself, Mary. Um, someone said they wondered if you could elaborate a little bit on why EVs are good for public health. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, well, number one, EVs are are much they emit way less uh, pollution than um, and greenhouse gas greenhouse gases than than conventional cars, even in areas of the country that that don't necessarily have very clean grids, so to speak. So um, so that's huge. That's huge. Transportation um, and cars are one of the biggest contributors to climate change. And so when you switch to electric and you drive electric, you're definitely being a part of the solution to clean our air and move towards a cleaner future for our children and grandchildren. So that's the number one benefit there. Um, but also, uh, you know, there's certain communities that are disproportionately impacted by air pollution that comes from our cars and in our transportation sector, um, like people of color and poor people and women. And so when, um, so even if you aren't part of those demographics, uh, if you are a wealthy white man, for example, driving a nice Tesla, good for you, um, but you're also contributing to cleaner air for everyone, cleaner, cleaner air for all people, especially those who are hardest hit uh, by pollution. So that is an, something else to consider um, because those, those demographics not only experience um, uh, the health impacts more, more, more intensely and at higher rates, um, like, 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 um, I know that um, asthma is a big example of that, and also certain forms of cancer. Um, so it's also important to keep in mind. <clears throat> um, other health benefits. I mean, I think that those are the big ones. But if anyone else wants to jump in with any other ideas, feel free. I think you covered it pretty well, and I'd be happy to. There have been a number of studies that released by the American Lung Association, for example 
um, and Union of Concerned Scientists and others that kind of give a scientific answer to that question that I think might help you if you're if you're in a debate with someone you'd like to cite statistics um, they're out there and it's it's obvious benefits from everything Mary mentioned from cleaner air that you can see uh, you know less smog all the way down to possibly affecting asthma rates in your towns and cities so um, and everything in between so I think um, you know that's a that's a benefit that matters to everybody in it that it has no political persuasion whatsoever um, that that uh, particular public health benefit. Um, here's another question, maybe maybe for you, Tonya, if you want to hop on the call, we didn't introduce you, but you're you're there, and we're happy to have you. Um, the question is, is there a car sharing service in Washington State, and if so, how's that going? Uh Hi, this is Tonya Buell, and I'm uh, one of the directors for Plug in America. And uh, there is a very strong tie between electric vehicles, autonomous vehicles, shared vehicles. We call it ACES here in Washington, Autonomous Connected Electric Shared Vehicles. And uh, Seattle is really leading the way with shared services such as Uber and Lyft and um, and the direction is to move to electric shared vehicles. So that's something we're definitely exploring here. This is Dick Murray. I have a son who just now driving electrics about a week, and he really also wants to be an Uber driver. And I'm hearing from the Nissan guy that Uber has a, and Nissan have a plan where they'll give you a discount if you, if you do, if you become an Uber driver with a Nissan Leaf. And so, I need to find out more about that, but that'd be another great way. Think about, you know, if somebody's an Uber driver driving an electric car and they pick up all these passengers, what a better way to promote electric vehicles than to be picked up by an electric vehicle? For some people, that'd be the first time they ever drive. But uh, um, I also had one thing I wanted to add about health. For us here in our area, we don't have too much of a problem with air pollution, but we have a problem with water pollution, especially into our Puget Sound. And all fuel oil vehicles eventually leak crankcase oil and it gets into the groundwater and it gets into the streams and it gets into the Puget Sound. So for the health of our Puget Sound or what's technically a bay of water, electric vehicles are the way to go in helping reduce the amount of pollution we have in our environment. Thanks. Yeah, excellent points. Both to you guys, thank you so much for that. Um, so, Dick, this next question is for you, and it's about electric vehicle registration fees. Maybe maybe you could talk a little bit about some alternatives and then maybe kick it over to Catherine Stankin, who has um, covered this in the best practices document that we'll be releasing soon. What are your thoughts on EV registration fees? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a two-edged sword. And let me tell you, um, we did raise the fee from $100 to 150 and the $50 was supposed to go into infrastructure. And, I, and I've and really been trying to fight to get rid of that $50 fee because I think the infrastructure is going to be paid for by uh, uh, by our friends at Volkswagen and a few others. But a $100 fee that we have for registration is uh, steep, but it really, it's almost politically necessary because it is, there is some criticism while you're not paying to help keep the roads up. And, uh, and so that $100 fee is probably going to stay. Uh, I, I would like to reduce it, but uh, and there was also the talk about going to a VMT, vehicle mile traveled. Uh, that might be an alternative for if you're driving an electric vehicle and you don't put many miles on it, that you could pay a VMT instead of the $100. But uh, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a battle I don't think I can win right now in, in the state of Washington. And this is uh, Tonya Buell. Uh, one thing that no one has mentioned is how uh, Representative Murray has really helped um, with the policy here in Washington State. We have a sales tax exemption on the purchase of new electric vehicles, for example, and uh, he was instrumental in getting that passed. Um, two things I wanted to add. One is we also, uh, for the question about shared electric vehicles, we have uh, Reach Now, which also has several of the BMW i vehicles um, that people can take out. And um, 
what was the other thought? I don't know. But anyway. And, and, the, and the sales tax is a big thing because it's 10, oh. 10%, yeah. Yes. So the uh, the additional $50 that electric vehicle drivers are paying in Washington is actually going towards EV charging infrastructure. We just um, have selected the awards for that, and we're able to take that $1 million that we have of $50 fees and use that to put in charging along some of our major highways. We've got a project going on uh, along I-5, our uh, biggest north, um, north-south uh, roadway here in Washington State, and then also on the eastern side of Washington in the Tri-Cities area. So both sides of the state uh, will be getting infrastructure that's actually paid for by EV drivers, and we were able to take that $1 million and get more than a $2.5 million worth of projects by getting the private sector involved in contributing to, to that program. So it's gonna be um, it's gonna be great. And we'll be talking about that during National Drive Electric Week. Awesome. Catherine, do you have anything you'd like to add on the EV registration fee issue or would you like the best practices document to speak for itself? Yeah, I think that folks can definitely take a look at that. And I think, um, you know, the VMT vehicle miles traveled policy is one alternative to a registration fee that may seem higher than what conventional uh, drivers are being charged. Um, there's also, you know, waiting until a certain percentage of EVs are on the road until that uh, registration fee is implemented. Um, and also another thing, um, I mean, a lot of states are doing pilot programs or studies um, and just doing a little bit more research and due diligence first before um, some of these higher registration fees are implemented. And so um, the uh, best practices doc will kind of take a deep dive into that. Fabulous. Um, so uh, Representative Dick, Mary, um, touched on the VW, our friends at VW, the Volkswagen settlement. Uh, does anybody want to talk a little bit about how that uh, settlement money might build out infrastructure across the country. Uh, this is Tonya. Oh, this is Tonya. Yeah, I was going to have to do it. Yes, yeah, so we are, uh, there are a few different pots of funding through the Volkswagen settlement. There's mitigation where each state is getting a, a certain amount through the national settlement, and up to 15% of that can be used for EV charging infrastructure. Uh, in several states, including Washington, uh, we are uh, working towards using that full 15% for EV charging infrastructure. Then, uh, and electric school buses, electric ferries, and other um, projects are eligible for those funding, for that funding. We also are working to secure VW direct investment through Electrify America. And in the, on the West Coast, they, uh, Electrify America is planning to invest in charging in Seattle, in Portland, and on the highway in between to get people between those two communities. And we're expecting significant investment, and that's really based on having uh, among the nation's highest EV, uh, EV owners. So we're really excited about that. Just uh, next week, we're having our first sit down meeting with Volkswagen to figure out what that's gonna look like. But I know they're having meetings all over the country with the selected cities. So between those two um, options, I think we will see a big uh, uptick in EV charging infrastructure, which directly affects sales. That's awesome. Um, so there's a there's a kind of long question, but I think it's really interesting, especially since we a, a number of speakers have talked a little bit about electric buses and electric school buses. So. Um, one of the city captains had a discussion with a Clean Cities coordinator who didn't think the buses were ready for prime time. Um, this person is interested in advice as they're trying to include it in a bus contract for their city. So the negotiations are ongoing and they want to know if anybody has any insights on, um, on the buses' performance so far. 
Uh, this is Tonya from uh, Plug in America again, and my background's in public transportation, so I've been watching the electric buses very closely. And uh, Representative Murray talked about the electric buses coming to Pierce um, County and Pierce Transit. Uh, those are through national low, low, no, low emission, no emission grants. We also have a, we actually have a state contract with more than 800 um, different options uh, that transit systems can purchase off of. So we have bulk purchasing on electric buses. King County Metro, uh, the biggest transit system in Washington, it tested out three Proterra buses for a couple of years and they're putting in an order for uh, 100 electric buses. And eventually they want to uh, actually transition fully to uh, electric buses on all their routes. So there are tests going on in some of our small, smaller transit systems uh, in both Western and Eastern Washington, and we're getting a lot of good data. So if somebody wants to contact me directly, um, I'd be happy to share information about all the tests going on in our state. I'll be sure to share your uh, email information with the with the crew after um, the this is over. Um, so another question is for um, Representative Murray. Have you gotten to drive the new Chevy Bolt yet, Dick? I actually this is a funny story. I I drove the Chevy Bolt on Sunday. I was walking by from the the beach and walking by this friend's home uh, who I had given her a test drive a year ago on my leave. She finally bought a Chevy Bolt. So I saw her plugged in her house. So I went and knocked on her door and she came in and we talked and then we went on a test drive of the Chevy Bolt. What a wonderful car. I must admit it was nice. <laughs> uh, it's got good acceleration. It's got a good range. Uh, it's got quite the braking thing system. You know, if you literally, even going down a hill, it's come, you come to a Please stop if you don't put accelerate. It's got the braking mode. That's really pretty, pretty cool. I, I thought overall it was a great car. Uh, so, um, you know, I hope to learn more about it. I didn't talk to her about price or leasing deals, but she bought it. Uh, so, but I think the Chevy Bolt is, uh, and the new Nissan Leaf that's coming up. And of course the new Tesla are, are going to be, I think basically almost a next generation electric vehicle. You know, when you're mm -hmm. talking about 200 to 250 mile range, you're now talking, you can take more trips on it, you have less range anxiety, and you have more, more options for driving. And I think it's a, this is it's a, it's a good day for the EV enthusiasts. It's true, you're right. Um, so the next couple questions actually I think I can handle. Uh, someone asked earlier on, um, it seems like there, are, you know, a lot of effort goes into some of these events. Some of them are huge with, uh, with um, you know members of Congress and mayors and uh, you know ten dealers and thousands of ride and drives, um, I don't want that to intimidate newcomers to the process. So um, we have a really kind of cool toolkit on the Plug in America page, um, which I can also share after the the presentation is over. It's essentially a driveway party kit where you can invite a few friends and neighbors over to check out your electric car um, and talk to them about the benefits. It doesn't need to be a giant um, event to be included in National Drive Electric Week. And we don't want to intimidate people out of um, wanting to get involved and, and kind of uh, push the envelope for themselves uh, in terms of their comfort level and what they're able to voluntarily do because I, this is a huge commitment on the part of many people and we really of course as Mary said at the very beginning appreciate all of your hard work that goes into putting on these events but uh, on the other hand you can turn it into a very small event there was an, a, a, a city captain that we talked to last time from Juneau Alaska who has um, a, just a small little party with uh, a few hot dogs and hamburgers on a grill and three or four EVs, and um, it's grown into a much larger event where they've had to move on to another location. And and Dick also has conveyed that you know he started out with 19 cars, going up to 40 cars, and now 
he's turning it more into a festival. You don't need to um, start out big um, in order to make an impact in your community. And and as I mentioned earlier, there is a cluster effect. There's kind of like, you know, Dick was walking down the street and sees a Chevy Bolt, suddenly he's talking to a neighbor, gets to take a test, test drive, and now he's a Bolt fan and might think about um, a Bolt uh, as maybe his next car. Um, so uh, uh, I, I'm hopeful that everyone can um, take advantage of the fact that we're kind of hopefully giving you infrastructure and tools and kit, kits you could use to make these events successful on the one hand. And on the other hand, we want it to be fun for you too and for you to be able to educate your friends and, and neighbors and uh, maybe even educate some local elected officials who might not know, maybe only um, have a plug-in bike. And by the end of your event, Dick, um, up in Steel Lacoon, maybe your compatriot uh, on the other side of the aisle will also want a plug-in car. Um, so um, I understand there, there's one other person who was talking about uh, electric buses maybe not being ready for prime time. I can put on my previous uh, uh, career hat. I worked for a long time at a nonprofit called CalStart. Um, which is a nationwide group, but their primary focus is on alternative fuel vehicles in the medium and heavy duty space. And I can tell you that the evolution of electric buses has been incredibly rapid and amazing. Um, I have personally been driven in them and I find them to be quiet, which is absolutely lovely. They do not smell of diesel um, and they have uh, proven in, at least in Southern California, where the number of them has been deployed already with a transit agency uh, called Foothill Transit. Um, they are rapid charging and they are reliable and they're, they cost less to maintain. So when, um, when you're talking to or thinking about uh, convincing your local elected officials to look at uh, acquisitions of electric buses, please don't um, don't assume that they're not ready for prime time because they're already in prime time in some of the biggest transit districts in the country. Um, I think that's it. Oh, would, would, would Plug in America and Sierra Club and the Electric Auto Association consider making this um, uh, <laughs> uh, National Drive Electric Week World or World Drive Electric Week? Um, we have had that question before and we've actually had a number of events throughout the world um for the first time ever there are pins in the map this year for mumbai india for aman jordan um and there will be events in croatia and events possibly in ireland as well we had a number of folks who um have expressed interest there's a really uh rapidly growing and vocal advocacy group in Ireland where uh, where people want to introduce their friends and neighbors to electric cars and they're kind of almost forcing the issue by making their local elected officials install charging stations before people even have the car so they're kind of building it on the presumption that people will will come um, build it and they will come kind of uh, advocacy campaign and it's working for them so um yeah, it is. It's kind of already an international drive electric week. Um, and I kind of like I do better than N do anyway. So maybe we can convince all of our partners to get together and make it an I do in the next year or two so that uh, we're making global change, not just uh, local or national change. And, and a quick shout out to our friends up in Canada who always put on amazing events from Ottawa, Vancouver, British Columbia, the Toronto. Um, the Canadians are really pushing the envelope too in terms of um, smart policies that help kind of grow the market and make it attractive for people who might not know uh, how awesome it is to drive electric and, and um, they're putting in smart policies and other incentives up in Canada as well. Um, maybe one more question here, let's see. Uh, so people are out there commenting. They like the driveway kit idea. I will, I promise, I pledge to you, I'll send this to you. Um, there are also some people who would love to talk a little bit about um, other car share programs uh, throughout the country. 
and I second Tanya's uh, um, call for every effort to be made to make sure that car shares are electrified um, so that the car sharing programs uh, are actually another way for um, urban dwellers at least to be able to experience electric vehicles. I know there's one program in Los Angeles. It's a private program that's run by General Motors called Maven, which offers Bolt and Volt uh, GM products for uh, hourly rental to people. Um, so there are a number of people I've talked to over at Maven who have said that people have experienced driving electric for the first time in their car shares and they love it. So, okay. I think Oh, one last question. Uh, someone wants to know if anybody knows about elect boat electrification. I think that they were intrigued by you, Dick, mentioning air uh, water quality as a key element. And I did hear Tonya mention electric furry ferry services. Are there any other um, insights into electrifying boats that you, either of you guys would like to share? No, but I did invite a guy from one of the islands, Ketrin Island, who uh, mentioned to me he's taking over his electric car on the ferry but he also has an electric boat that he wants to sell and i didn't know there was electric boats so uh but i also noticed that i went to anderson island another island that's in my district here this weekend and i noticed how much pollution that ferry produces when it you know was docking and going through gear ships or whatever it was doing i mean it was billowing black clouds and it was just it was appalling and so I know there's been talk about using natural gas for the uh, uh, converting some of the ferry systems in the state. This was a my county ferry system, but uh, I had not heard about electrification, and that might be a good question to ask. That would make a lot of sense, you know, that you could do in a, uh, a, a, no different than diesel or natural gas. You could have an electric ferry or electric or people their motorboats. I, of course, there is small boats in on some of these lakes where they prohibit. Uh, motor uh, boats, but they do allow electric, and that's for the reasons of pollution. So uh, that that's a that's a good question. I need to we all need to learn more about that. And actually, the Washington State Department of Transportation um, Ferries Division is looking at replacing um, some of the diesel vehicles with electricity, um, and we've been able to pencil out that uh, as one of the largest fuel users in the state. Uh, that the savings uh, just in fuel and maintenance alone will have a very quick payback period, like five to 10 years. So we're definitely exploring that right now. Oh, that's fascinating. Great. Good. Well, we actually ran a little couple few minutes long, but I could keep on talking. There are other questions that people are asking. I'd be happy to circle back with folks and answer them individually by email. And if you like, you can also uh, contact Dick and Tonya. I'll be sharing their contact information as well. Thank you so much for joining us. And thanks for jumping on, Tonya, too. You had a ton of helpful information to share. And, and we didn't even get your picture on the pre presenter slides. I apologize for that. Well, um, I'm enjoying uh, being uh, here in the room uh, with uh, Dick Murray. He is one of the biggest, best supporters that we have, a big champion in Washington State, and I'm glad that he was able to share some of his um, ideas with people all across the nation. He's definitely a leader, so great, great job with today's webinar. Yes, uh, I'm sure Catherine and Mary would second that. Thank you again, Dick, for making time to be here, and Thanks everybody for making time to uh, attend and listen in and keep uh, those questions coming. We'll try to answer them offline uh, as soon as possible. Good night, everybody. Good night.